Hi, this is Alan Gleason. Please subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel for further tutorials. In a previous tutorial, we looked at spectrum analyzers and how to use them to analyze a mix. In those videos, I was using the free spectrum analyzer from Voxengo called Span. In this tutorial, we're going to look at a more advanced feature when using this device that allows us to perform multi-channel analysis using a single device. So this works with the VSD version of Voxengo Span. So any DAW that supports VSD plugins, you'll be able to perform this task within it. I've got Voxengo Span inserted after my drums here on this track. I'll just solo my drums. So when I call this up here, it's performing analysis on all that material. So we're getting a stereo analysis of the material that's playing, the combination of all my drum sounds. What we're going to look at today is setting up the plugin in such a way that I can perform individual analysis on each channel. So I've set up a group over here and now I can listen to my drums in the context of my mix. And if I go to this group channel here and I call up the Voxengo span, I can now monitor the kick drum. I'm actually using two kick drums so I can listen to the second one. I can analyze the snare. I can analyze the clap. And I can analyze all the other percussion parts that I have playing on that particular group. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to look at the setup of how we actually do this. So because I've already done that for my drums, I'm going to set up a group that allows me to analyze the mix. The first thing I want to do is create the number of tracks that I want to analyze. So because I've got four tracks here, I'm going to add an additional four tracks. So you can analyze up to eight channels in total, but we'll just set up four tracks in this exercise. So I'll select all of these tracks and I'll put them in a group. So I'll just rename this group to Span Mix. And then I'll insert the Span plugin on that track. So once I got that done, I'm going to rename my other tracks. So I'll call this what the first one track is called, the drums. Then the second one is the bass. Next one is our chords. And then the final one is just some additional percussion. So you can color code these to be the same as the original tracks, or you can just leave them as they are. I'll just leave them as they are for now. So what we want to do now is we want to route these channels into our group channel. So you can see that they're already assigned to span mix. So this is going to be my first channel. So I'm going to pan this to the left. So we're only analyzing a single mono channel. I'm going to pan that one right. And both of these are routed to span mix. For the next two channels, I have to do something slightly differently. And that when I want to access the different outputs of this particular channel, I select span mix here. And that gives me additional outputs. So this one is three and four, and that's what I want. So I'll pan that to the left, and I'll do the same for this other channel. I'll put that to span mix, and I pan this to the right. So now I'll turn off the span mix channel, because we're not going to be actually monitoring that. We're only going to be using this group for analysis. And I will set up my input sources. So my drums, I'm going to take it from, obviously, my drums. And I'll set where in the signal path that I want to monitor it from. So I'll put it post effects. The next one I want to analyze my bass, post effects. The next one I'll put it to yeah, chords, post effects. And the next one, just my additional percussion, I'll put that to post effects. So I'll put all of these to input. So I want to monitor the input. And now when I play back, I can see my channels here being rooted into my group. And when I call up my analyzer, now what we're getting currently here is just the same as routing a stereo mix through the analyzer. So we need now we need to configure the analyzer to be able to analyze those individual channels. So if it's not turned on already, you enter your settings in the top right hand corner here and turn on show groups bar. So by default that is turned off. So you want to turn that on so you have access to select the different groups. From there we want to set up our routing. So when we call up our routing window, we've got eight input sources here and eight group assignments here. So they're the ones we want to change the names of. You could leave the names the way they are, just use the default name one, two, and three, and so on. But just for clarity here, I'm going to alter the names here. So for my in channels, I'll put the first one to what it is, which is our drums. Then the next one, put it to bass. And the next one was it chords and percussion. So if you had other tracks in your mix, you could add them there up to eight inputs. And then for my, 
my group names, I'll put them the same. So drum, bass, chords, and percussion. Leave it as perk. So now we have the first one there. C, D, E. You can see underneath them we've got drums, bass, chords, perk, and so on. We're not using the other inputs. Now here I'll set the first one to be drums. The second one is bass. Third one I'll put it to chords. And the fourth one I'll put it to perk. The other ones we're not using at the minute. So I'll just put them to their default settings. So as I'm changing these names here, you'll see down in the groups here, the names are also being updated here. So if I'm happy with this, I can close this down. If this is a particular setting that you might want to use again, you could go into your presets and you could add a preset and I could call this my mix group or something like that. And yeah, save that. So this might seem a lot of setting up to do, but once you've done this, you can save this uh, session either as a template or you can have this template available in your browser so you can just drag in this particular group into any mix that you're directly working on. So I'll close this down. And now when I call up the Vox Engo Span, I can listen to my drums, I can analyze my bass, I can look at the chords, and I can look at the percussion. What's useful here is that I can also, as well as analyzing an individual track from within a single device, I can overlay two channels at the same time. If I was worried about say, frequency clashes in my drums in my bass, at the top here, I can select another underlay and I can select bass. So now I'm looking at my drums and my bass simultaneously, or say if I wanted to listen to my chords, and I was wondering what was going on with the percussion and the chords. I can turn on the percussion and now I can see those two instances being analyzed simultaneously. So this is an incredibly useful feature to stay in the flow of the mix. You don't have to start soloing channels to isolate them in a single spectrum analyzer. And you can set up various groups for the different material that you're working on. I find this a real time saver function when I'm working on a mix. And overall, it helps me produce better sounding mixes with less frequency clashes. So I hope you found this useful. This has been Alan Gleason for ADSR. Please subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel for further tutorials. <laughs>